Hello, and welcome to Creating an OER Community of Practice. I'm Todd Seguin, and I am the OER librarian at Western Kentucky University. And I'm Colleen Deal, the OER librarian at Northern Kentucky University. Thanks for checking out our presentation. In 2022, Todd and I were hired at our respective institutions, becoming the first OER librarians in Kentucky. We began to independently develop our local programs, navigating the unique responsibilities on our own. After a chance meeting between the two of us, we were able to share our own struggles and with growing a new program without strong internal or external support. With us both seeking a community to help us grow, we decided to create a Kentucky community of practice and invite library professionals interested in the open education and open access movements to join. This was the start of the Kentucky Open Access, Open Educational Resources Community of Practice. After today's session, we hope you have a good understanding of the benefits we as librarians can gain by building community beyond our institutions, be it in open education or with any other focus. We also want you to walk away with the skills to build your own community. And finally, we want to make sure you have concrete examples for ways to make the meetings fun, engaging, and worthwhile. To help you with these goals, we'll look at the community of practice we created and talk about how it started, how it works, how it's evolved and what we've learned, and what's come from it and where it's going. In the past few years, Kentucky universities and colleges have increased the number of library personnel dedicated to affordable learning, but it was only in fall of 2022 that Todd and I were the only full-time OER librarians in the Commonwealth. Of course, it being a new role for us and a new position for both of our institutions, we had a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. We felt like many of our coworkers didn't quite understand our jobs, and although we experienced a lot of enthusiasm from our colleagues and administration, it came without direction. Ultimately, we both went looking for connections, collaborations, and ways to grow. Thankfully, we heard about one another and decided to meet through Zoom. During our first conversation, we spent time simply getting to know each other and what our jobs entailed. After that, we decided to start searching for others who might also be looking for community. We asked our supervisors to help us make connections and searched university and college websites in the Commonwealth for people doing this work. We compiled an email list of folks at other Kentucky institutions that had open or scholarly communication duties. And to our surprise, there were a pretty good number of folks. In order to connect with these folks, we started to an email thread to gauge interest. With those initial contacts leading us to more people in the Commonwealth interested in open access and open educational resources. Once the conversation started and folks declared interest in creating an email group, then we needed to organize our first meeting and think about what shared information or documentation we needed to keep. We used DoodlePoll to find shared and preferred times for meetings and created a Google folder to share our membership list, a topics list, and a space for note-taking with each other. Finally, we had our first meeting. We wanted this meeting to be very informal so we could get to know each other and understand what each other does. We came up with some conversation starters and spent the hour talking and getting to know one another. For example, we introduced our pets, we talked about where we were from, and we shared information about the trajectory of our current roles. In that first meeting, we also collaborated to determine the logistics of the group. We wanted everyone to have a say in deciding the frequency of our meetings, the content, and the general vibe. So how does it work? We set up monthly meetings. So each semester using that doodle poll, we decide on a shared time that works best. Kentucky is a split time zone state, so it makes things a bit more difficult, but we found that generally lunchtime is best since most people are free and with the informal vibe of our meeting, it's just fine if a person wants to eat lunch with or without the camera on. Every semester we review when to host these meetings, but generally they stick around the same time and day. Although this semester, we're testing out meeting at different times to accommodate the most people. 
We always create calendar invites so we have a good idea of who can come to each meeting and we keep a consistent Zoom link to cut down on confusion. The group has a collection of shared documents in a Google Drive. Colleen created the documents and all the members have access to things like a list of books or articles of interest, shared outreach presentations that members have created, and a brainstorming page for possible new topics of discussion. We make sure to sprinkle fun topics in with our work discussions. We found we're creating stronger relationships that lead to better connections when we learn about each other's hobbies, favorite project at work, pets, or the coolest thing a person learned at a conference. One week before our meeting, we send out an email with a session topic, like tell us about a conference coming up, tell us something special about your institution, what's your library org chart, and where do you fit in? Let us know about a project you've been working on that you're proud of. Finally, we always make sure to include free time for open discussion and venting. This unstructured section helps maintain the informality of our group. We make an effort to stay separate from other open education and affordable learning communities in Kentucky. These committees are often selective and have specific goals. This committee is about something else. We want a space to embrace the many people doing the actual OA and OER work in Kentucky, whether they have a role in their job description or not. We've made an effort to create a space that is without hierarchy, so we can talk through our thoughts or new ideas without a feeling of judgment. Now, informality doesn't mean no planning or effort, but instead, we're looking for something outside of productivity. As we continue to maintain the Kentucky Open Access, Open Educational Resources community, We've seen the group evolve and we've learned a lot over the course of these nearly two years. First, the community continues to grow. Maintaining the community has made us hyper aware of all the new library hires happening across the Commonwealth. Whenever we hear about a new employee who may be doing this type of work, we send them an email explaining our group and inviting them to the next meeting. This past semester, after realizing that we often referred to articles or presentations we gained inspiration from and wanted to share it with others, we've started including a new element to our meetings by collectively reviewing the scholarly conversation surrounding open access and open educational resources. For each meeting, a member can share a paper, a poster, a video, or a presentation as suggested viewing to spur a conversation based around some relevant scholarship. For example, a recent conversation we had was about OE Global 2023's keynote from Kayla Larson titled Six R's of Indigenous OERs, Rethinking and Reworking Indigenous Open Ed. Our community drives our conversation. So often we talk about more than just open educational resources and open access. We discuss a lot in our meetings, including other institutions and statewide library initiatives, what is happening with job openings in our institution or across the state, the budget, and our institutions more generally. We've also created a listserv for easy emailing between meeting conversations. This is for any questions we might like to have a crowdsourced answer to. We've also experienced barriers and had to work through problems throughout this process. Here are some lessons learned. Without pre-existing infrastructure to support our community, we had to rely on an individual institutions or free infrastructure. We're using an institutional Zoom account for our meetings, and we're lucky that one of our members of the group could create an official listserv for our email list. We also rely heavily on DoodlePoll and Google products to organize and share our information. We found it difficult to maintain a membership list where people can self-select to be involved or not, depending on their availability, since there's really no automatic way to do it. Creating those mechanisms might make people feel more at ease to come and go as they please. Also be prepared for attendance fluctuations. Sometimes we have a dozen and other times it may be four or five in a meeting. Depending on that number of attendees and their interests, our meetings may look very different. And even without a hierarchical structure, it is important to have at least one point of contact who can serve as a kind of administrator of the group 
And actually, it has been very helpful to have two folks, in this case, Todd and I, kind of co-chairing in case one cannot make it and so we can split up our duties. These duties include things like setting up the meeting, sending reminders, and coming up with ideas for new topics. And finally, it's very common for the anticipated topic of discussion to be completely derailed by somebody bringing up something else, and that's okay. Come prepared with a topic for discussion and also be prepared for that topic to never come up. Well, what's come of it? Both tangible and intangible things, actually. Other groups have been inspired or grew out of our community. There is now a STEM librarian community of practice in Kentucky. After I mentioned our success to my colleague, Ashley, she worked with others from UK and U of L to create their group. And the Kentucky OER grant and infrastructure group grew out of conversations in our community of practice. Enough people from our group were interested in pursuing more serious statewide goals discussed in our meetings that one member, Ben Rollins from the University of Kentucky created that group. We have also inspired new collaborations. So far, our group has joined together to make two conference presentations. This one at OpenCon Ohio and an open education Q&A roundtable discussion with a panel of faculty, librarians, and course designers at the, Kentucky at the Kentucky Convergence Conference last fall. About a dozen of our members worked together to write an article for the Kentucky Library Journal on the current state of OER in the Commonwealth that should be published later in 2024. As we've made connections, the group has fostered a sense of belonging. We now have these great Zoom friendships, and since the group is filled with experienced and diverse folks, you can show up with a question and someone there will have an answer or can get one for you. By helping each other, we experience moments where we feel we're making a difference, which is sometimes difficult to achieve in our work. And finally, simply gathering to share our experiences has revealed common goals and challenges with, which strengthen our sense of community. And where is it going? Of course, we imagine more co collaborations on articles and presentations. We have discussed statewide regional gatherings to provide OER workshops and hope to create a centralized place online with the best OER resources. We're also considering trying to help facilitate a community of practice for faculty who use OER. Thank you for viewing our presentation. We look forward to engaging with you in the Discord server. You can also reach out to us at our email addresses seen on the slide.